G'day, good morning, and welcome to the channel. As you can see, I'm out in the field, and today I'm gonna to set myself a challenge. I'm actually gonna go back in time to 2012, and I'm gonna use the flagship camera of that era. This is the original 1DX. So this had 18 megapixels, I think it was 12 frames per second, a big buffer. It really was revolutionary when it came out. And I remember when I first heard about it, I thought, oh man, I'd love to try that camera. But it was way out of my price range. In Australia, these go up towards $10,000 and I was using a 7D at the time. There's no way I'd ever be able to afford a camera like this. However, times have changed and you can now pick one of these up second hand for around, I think, twelve to $1,500. So it's starting to become affordable for um, bird photographers. And I'm curious to know whether this camera is worth buying in 2021. So I'm here at a lake and I'm gonna give it a go. I'm gonna try it on my 500 F4, which was actually also released in 2012 and just see how it performs. Now, um, it's pretty cold, I must admit. Our hands are feeling a little bit uh, frozen, but um, there's not quite as many birds here as my previous visit, so I might struggle and the water level is really high, meaning I'm not sure exactly where I'm gonna be able to lay down. I might have to go to the water's edge here, but the birds aren't all that close. So um, I'll see how I go. I might struggle a little bit today, but that's part of the challenge. So uh, we'll get set up and we'll get into it. All right, so I've got this uh, ground pod, which I've, so you've got to seen in a number of my videos. I'll put a link in the description. It's called a skimmer pod, ground pod. Works really, really well. I've got my gimbal head and I just simply attach the gimbal head onto the ground pod, like so. And this will be my base for setting up today. So I'll put the lens on here. All right, so we've got our 500 F4, we've got our 1.4 converter, and we've got the 1DX. This ground pod enables me to get really low, so getting low is key. All right, so the sun's definitely coming up and it's just starting to hit the water. The birds are still in the shade, which makes uh, exposure a little bit tricky. There's a coot coming, so we'll just... But it's still in the darkness. We've got a little bit of light now, which is making it a little bit better. to the shutter of this 1DX. <laughs> it's pretty noisy, that's for sure. Immediately, I immediately notice how different it is using a DSLR, because I've been using a mirrorless for so long that we don't get the um, exposure in the viewfinder. Uh, it can be really easily to over or underexpose because you, know, you can't see what your exposure is. You're relying on the meter in the back of the camera. It's a beautiful morning, very still. There's a pair of black fronted dotrels that are just in front of me. Unfortunately, we don't have any light, but I did get a few shots. It's pretty amazing. This is what I actually live for with these shorebirds, just observing these birds. I've actually got my R5 and 100 to 500 to record them, so I've got a bit of footage of them. They're right in front of me and they don't seem too bothered, and that's the key when you lay down low and you just relax. They often will come to you, and that's what's happening now. Wish I had some sun. The sun's gone behind a big tree. So I've just had a really good session with a few birds this morning and I think it highlights that I actually had my doubts. I thought there's not many birds around, I'm not in the best spot, you know, am I gonna get some nice shots? And I think we all experience that. But if you just get out there and you lay and you wait, things tend to happen. And some cockatoos have just landed in this tree way up over the back here. And it actually makes for a really nice composition. We've got all these uh, cockatoos in the treetops 
and I've taken a couple of shots and I really like it and if I wasn't here I wouldn't have got that shot. Um, these little black fronted dotrels, I was not expecting those this morning and they've come quite close enabled me to get some shots. Um, got a headshot of a poo gecko and a couple of Pacific black ducks just swimming on the water so you know in a short space of time half an hour or so um, we've managed to rattle off quite a few shots and I'm pretty confident that some of those will turn out to be quite nice so because I need to stop doubting myself I guess and just you know enjoy the, the process but I think we all experienced that so I thought it would be worth sharing. Okay, we've got some um, ducklings coming, some Pacific black, black duck ducklings. Okay, something amazing just happened and it's what we want as bird photographers. I managed to capture some really awesome behaviour. So the black fronted dotrel ran out into the grass and I saw it pick up some, I'm not sure exactly what it was, it was a, a big bug and it, its legs was coming out and it couldn't quite eat it so it's walking around with this big um, bug in its mouth and I managed to get quite a few frames. I'm hoping that they come out because that's what we're after, we're after that sort of behaviour, you know, the bird feeding, its natural environment and uh, I'm just fingers crossed that the shots came out that it'd be amazing if we can um, display that behavior. I did have a bit of grass in the way but It's turning out to be a really good morning with lots of good photos. All right, well that brings this morning's session to an end. That was just amazing. I had so much fun. I was in my element laying here in the mud, photographing the dotrels and the ducks. I really didn't have to move. All the birds were just coming to me. So, you know, if you can find a location such as this, you can just really enjoy your photography, being with the birds, being with nature, listening to it 
can't get much better than this. All right, so how did the 1DX perform with the 500? Well, pretty well. I'm sure I got lots of shots. I hopefully you enjoyed them. The 12 frames per second is fantastic. So it's just much better than my old 5D4. Um, I didn't hit the buffer at all today. Just having that at those 12 frames per second is a big advantage. Um, the autofocus, um, I must admit I struggle a little bit. The it just seemed to hunt a little bit for some reason. I think I'm used to the auto IF of the mirrorless now, whereas you find the subject, you auto eye and it just tracks the bird. Whereas with this, I was sort of tracking the bird, but then it would struggle to find it where the black fronted dot was in the grass. And at times it just couldn't find the bird. It was just hitting the grass and then going and coming back. So I did have a little bit of trouble and I'm sure I missed quite a few shots because of that. However, um, for the price, you're paying, you know, 1500 bucks for a very good camera you know at the time it was worth 10 grand when it first came out so for $1,500 you're going to get a really good frames per second good buffer the IQ and the ISO performance I'm sure is, is good um, you know 18 megapixels is probably a little bit small for most people now but you're still going to get lots of really nice photos um, it's extremely um, hard wearing you know the battery's going to last forever I guess the downside is the weight I think it weighs around one and a half kilos so when paired with this lens um, we're looking at about four and a half kilos or close to 10 pounds which is quite heavy and you sort of would struggle to handhold this for long periods of time but as you saw I used my ground pot and my gimbal no issue whatsoever so overall um, the gear performed very well but if you're on a real budget and you want a really good DSLR then the 1DX may be an option for you just be aware of the um, shutter count you don't want to go sort of over I don't know maybe 150,000 under 100 100,000 would be ideal these shutters do go forever but um, ideally you want one that has a lower shutter count um, but yeah definitely uh, a fun morning I hope you enjoyed it if you like this content obviously give me that thumbs up subscribe if you want to see more of these videos thanks to the members that support the channel until the next one take care and see you later We've got the old 1DX, that's what we're going to be using today. And this allows me, whoa, <laughs> better make sure it's locked in there.